obstruction of Congress, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and insurrection. Those are the three criminal charges the January 6th committee may recommend the Justice Department pursue against former President Trump when it meets, likely for the last time on Monday. That's according to sources who spoke with CNN tonight. Obviously, it is a big day if and when that occurs, coming after almost 17 months of investigations and public testimony. The committee, as you know, spent almost a year and a half compiling evidence showcasing their findings during often gripping hours-long public hearings this year. The destruction of Congress always at the forefront of possible charges. Much of it centered around the pressure on former Vice President Pence to overturn the election, as well as the pressure on the Justice Department. You also noted that Mr. Rosen said to Mr. Trump, quote, DOJ can't and won't snap its fingers and change the outcome of the election. How, how did the president respond to that, sir? He responded very quickly and said, essentially, uh, that's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm just asking you to do is just say it was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Now, evidence to support the second charge, conspiracy to defraud, was presented almost from the outset in the first hearing and in what we should warn you with some rather direct off-color language, the committee played testimony by former U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr, who is one of many who said they repeatedly tried to tell the former president that there was no fraud in the election. In other words, the former president knew or should have known his allegations were untrue. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. As for the third charge, insurrection, the committee cited testimony by rally goers as well as the president's own words to establish his culpability for the riot. He personally asked for us to come to D.C. that day. And I thought, for everything he's done for us, if this is the only thing he's going to ask of me, I'll do it. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. Did you recall President Trump mentioning going to the Capitol during his speech? Oh, yeah. I'm joined now by CNN political correspondent Sarah Murray. What, what have we learned about the, these possible criminal referrals? Well, look, I mean, you laid out the three potential charges that we are learning about, but that may not be all. There may be, may be more than that that they refer to the Justice Department when it comes to Trump. What we're really looking for is a lot of the underlying evidence that they put out to support these charges. Some of those you laid out there, like when we're talking about obstruction, when we're talking about conspiracy, these are the kinds of things the Justice Department has pursued when it comes to the rioters who stormed the Capitol that day. When you're talking about something like insurrection, that's a much more complicated charge, so we're going to be looking at what the committee lays out as evidence. What we're going to see on Monday, though, is essentially what lawmakers have been saying separately as one voice from the committee. We've heard individually from a number of lawmakers who said they believe that Donald Trump committed a crime when it came to what happened on January 6th. They believe he was culpable. And now this is their ability to really lay that out. Again, this is largely symbolic. The Justice Department does not take its cues from Congress, but lawmakers have said they believe they found evidence that crimes were committed, and that may not stop with just the former president, and they think that they need to lay that out for the historical record and for the Justice Department. What do you know about what federal investigators have gotten access to and, and what it might mean to the January 6th investigation? Well, this is interesting because it's from a court filing that just became public. We're learning federal investigators have been able to access email accounts, more than 100,000 documents, and a book outline. This all pertains to communications between Republican Congressman Scott Perry, former DOJ officials Jeffrey Clark and Ken Klukowski, as well as attorney John Eastman. And it gets into their discussions that they were having around the 2020 election. You know, Jeffrey Clark was penning an outline for a book about his experiences around the 2020 election. We now know federal investigators have this. So this is a wealth of information. It gives you an idea of how deep federal investigators are going into this. But the other thing that's notable is we are just learning about this now because a version of it became unsealed. But this is what prosecutors have been looking into months ago. So that's something else to remember as we get going Monday and as we hear what the committee has to say. Prosecutors are already very far down this road when it comes to investigating Donald Trump, his allies, and what was going on in the run-up to January 6th. Sarah Murray, appreciate it. I'm joined now by our chief political analyst. Gloria Borger, senior contributor, former Nixon White House counsel John Dean, and senior legal analyst Elliot Williams, a former federal prosecutor. Gloria, how historically significant would it be for a former president of the United States to be referred to the Justice Department for criminal charges? It is historically significant and uh, meaningful because when you take a step back and think about what these criminal referrals are, they are saying that a former president of the United States while he was in office, 
was effectively trying to orchestrate a coup, trying to fraudulently change an election so he could remain in office. It's kind of remarkable. Other charges, obstruction of Congress, of course, conspiracy to defraud the United States government. The fact is, however, and I think Sarah was clearly referring to this, is that the Justice Department does not say, okay, this is what we're going to do. But this criminal referral is to say to the American public, this is what we believe after our voluminous hearings and investigations. And we are handing this material over to the Department of Justice and let the Department of Justice decide whether or if to charge the former president with any of these with any of these charges. So I think um, the Justice Department doesn't need to get up to speed. We have seen with hundreds of prosecutions of people who were storming the Capitol. They've already started in that sense. And they are clearly looking at Donald Trump yeah. and a lot of his uh, could be co-conspirators. Yeah. El Elliot, I mean, does the Justice Department care whether or not they have a criminal referral from from? I mean, it's not an official. It's not a real thing. You know, Anderson, I'd go even further saying, and it's not even about caring. I actually think a criminal referral gets in the Justice Department's way a little bit because it politicizes the work of the Justice Department, even assuming that Congress is righteous in what they're pursuing uh, with a criminal referral. There's still a partisan elected body, um, and, and even a bipartisan committee of Congress is still a political body that sort of puts the thumb on the scale of the Justice Department. So imagine if then the Justice Department proceeds with charges that they would have pursued anyway. There's at least that question that they were spurred to do what they do, uh, what, what they did on account of the act of an act by Congress. So it's it doesn't matter. Again, as I've said on your program before, um, the Justice Department will proceed regardless of what Congress does. But it does put them in a somewhat tricky position of having to at least answer the question of whether their prosecution was political. John, I mean, when it comes to the charges being considered obstruction of official proceeding, insurrection, conspiracy to defraud the federal government, if the DOJ were to pursue them, how high is the bar for those in a court of law? Well, of course, it has to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt in a, in a federal court in a criminal proceeding like this, and that's the highest standard of proof. So they, unlike this committee, which is relying on hearsay in occasions, uh, they have to get to the source of everything. They do have the tools at the Department of Justice to do that, something the committee doesn't. Uh, so they naturally, they do rely on hearsay because uh, they trust the source they're getting it from. So what, what's going to happen at Justice is really much different than what's happened at the committee. But this committee is taking such a historic look at the presidency at such an important time that I think their work is really going to be uh, remembered long, long, long after uh, Monday. Gloria, I mean, how does this impact, do you think, the, you know, assuming the committee makes a referral, mm -hmm. how does it impact the former president and, and his uh, alleged presidential campaign? Well, uh, I think if he were out campaigning, he might be talking about it uh, and claiming he were the victim. But since he's not out campaigning very much, um, I don't know how it'll affect uh, his campaign. We've already seen Anderson in our poll this week that six out of 10 Republicans, and he's popular with Republicans, but six out of 10 Republicans are saying, you know, maybe we ought to think of someone else. So this is just one more thing piled on top of lots of other things, uh, the Mar-a-Lago investigation being one of them, for example. Um, but I think Republicans are starting to kind of look for somebody else because they're tired of this. Elliot, is there a sense of, for the Justice Department, a timeline? I mean, uh, it's... Obviously, we don't know the details of where they're at in their investigation. Um, it seems to be, you know, ramping up. They will get all the information, I assume, once it's made public that the uh, the select committee has. So, yeah. any sense of how long an investigation could go yeah. on for? Well, look, the, the official answer is five years from the commission of the offense. Typically, is a statute of limitations for most crimes. So that's how long they have legally uh, in which to do it. The problem is that you just run into a political calendar when things change. So, for instance, a new Justice Department could certainly stop or suspend um, any of these investigations that are ongoing now. Um, and certainly anything's going to take at least a year to get to trial anywhere, or at least several months to get to trial. Um, so look, if, if you're talking about an insurrection charge, which probably isn't happening, um, given how rarely it's been charged in American history, but it, it would take several months, if not a year, to get to trial to begin with. 
Um, so right there, they are up against a bit of a clock. Um, so I would assume if charges were coming, they would probably have to come pretty soon because the folks working at headquarters of the Justice Department aren't dummies and know that they don't they aren't blessed with unlimited time. And Tom, when it comes to John Eastman's emails, what is the Justice Department do you think are looking for there? Well, they, apparently they constantly are finding new ones. They're looking to see what kind of advice he was giving. Did he know that it was bogus advice? Apparently there's some indication he did, that he knew it wouldn't survive in any court of law. Uh, so he was telling the president to do things that were not within the bounds of the law. He was pushing uh, examples that were really not good legal advice. Uh, he was actually a member of a conspiracy uh, where he was not doing anything to uh, distance himself from those illegal activities, but rather trying to give the president a, a key to push his vice president to do what was conspicuously wrong.